in Africa. Between the 11th and 25th August 2022, 41 terrorists have been arrested by troops across the country. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa reports that eight terrorists were arrested by troops of the Guards Brigade during raids on criminal hideouts in Dede and Abatua, as well as Dukba village in Guagualada, Abuja. It is yet another defense media operations, giving update on ongoing armed forces operations across the country. Top on the victory list is the rescue of 16 kidnapped victims, elimination of 37 unrepentant terrorists, and the arrest of 42 terrorists, eight from Abuja. On 13 August 2022, troops of Guard Brigade raided some suspected terrorist hideouts at Dede Abattoir in Abuja Metropolit uh, Metropolitan Area Council and Dukka Village in Guagalara Area Council of the Federal Capital Territory. During the raid operations, eight suspected terrorists were arrested, five AK-47 rifles and three pump-action guns were recovered while a large quantity of items suspected to be uh, cannabis sativa, three machetes, knives, among other items, were also recovered. Eight kidnappers met their waterloo, while several criminal gangs destroyed and arms recovered. The air component of Operation Hadar and Kai on 20th August 2022 carried out strikes on terrorist enclave in Sambisa Forest and the tumbles in Borno within, with various degrees of success recorded. Not begin to rejoice. The defense headquarters is urging the public to ensure timely provision of intelligence to security agencies to facilitate proactive operations. From the defense headquarters in Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. Still on security, the National Security Advisor Baba Ghana Mongonu says the federal government has ratified its membership of the Budapest Convention to enhance international cooperation in the fight against cybercrime. A statement by the head strategic communication office of the National Security Advisor Zakari Usman indicates that the development followed the Federal Executive Council's approval and signing of the instrument of air station by President Muhammadu Buhari and transmission to the Council of Europe. Nigeria, having enacted the Cyber Crimes Prohibition Prevention Act 2015 to codify criminal activities in cyberspace and minimize risk to online platforms and critical infrastructure, the nation has also developed a comprehensive national cybersecurity policy and strategy 2021. The Nigerian Computer Emergency Response Team and the National Digital Forensic Laboratory. The Council of Europe invited Nigeria to accede to the Convention on Cybercrime, also known as the Budapest Convention on Cybercrime. On July 6, 2022, Nigeria joined 66 other countries that have ratified the Convention on Cyber Crime. The Nazaru state government has again demonstrated its commitment to tackle security challenges by donating vehicles to all security challenges agencies in the state to enhance their operations. Governor Abdullahi Sule urged them to brace up and contain emerging threats for peaceful coexistence. Ali Tijani completes the report. 38 vehicles donated by the national state government to security agencies in the state to enhance mobility and cop crimes. Also, vigilante group and hunters in the state benefit from the state government gesture as they complement security agencies in maintaining law and order in the state. Others who also benefited are traditional rulers and some state government parastatas, among other top government functionaries. Governor Abdullah Hitzule, while presenting keys to the beneficiaries, tax them to reciprocate the gesture and be alive to their responsibilities. Thank you for all the good work they are doing. And we hand over this issue. Thank you. We wasted no time in trying to ensure that we buy the vehicles that will also continue to support our security agencies for their operations. The security business is not a one-man business. The security is for all. Everybody has to contribute to its own quarter to ensure that the state is short.
This is not the first time the administration of Abdullah is donating vehicles to security agencies, but the latest donation stakeholders believe will boost morale of personnel while in the front line to secure the state. In Lafia, Aliu Tijani, NT News. Meanwhile, two children of the late Sheikh Goni Sami, a prominent Islamic cleric murdered last Friday, have been presented with letters of appointment by the Yobi State Head of Service. In line with Governor Meimala Boni's directive, the reaction is to cushion the hardship the family of the slain cleric may experience having lost the breadwinner. Eunice Suleiman completes the report. A promise made, they say, is a promise kept. And that is Yobi State Head of Service, Bilal Garba, presenting letters of appointment to Sa'ad Goni Aisami, a graduate of chemistry education, and his sister Fatima, a graduate of Hausa education, both from University of Meduguri. Their appointment into the state civil service is in fulfillment of Governor Buni's directive that two children of Led Shak Goni Aisami should be offered automatic employment. Chairman of the teacher, he will take them to the teaching service for their purpose where they will go and commence their documentation. And immediately they finish their documentation or they will stay with the Ministry of Finance for biometric. Saad Goni Aisami, amid tears of losing their father, appreciated the state government for the kind gesture. We really appreciate our uh, to our family. The new state employees have been redeployed to government day secondary school Geshua as classroom teachers. In the Matru, Yunusa Suleiman, in TNU. And still staying with the Northeast, the Yobi State Governor, Mimala Buni, has made a strong case for countries in the Lake Chad region to sustain joint action programs and territorial action plans to enable governors in the region fully implement post-insurgency recovery efforts directed towards restoring peace and security as well as address all the developmental challenges of the region. This came up while playing host to the governor of far north region of Cameroon and chairman forum of governors of the Lake Chad Basin region, who was on a working visit to Yobi State. The four countries in the Lake Chad region have long-standing multilateral relationship as people in these countries share similar historical and cultural antecedents dating back to pre-colonial era. This visit by the governor of far north region of Cameroon, who doubles as the chairman for one of governors of the Lake Chad Basin region, Mijinyo Bakariti Yobe State, is to cross-fertilize ideas with the state officials on how best to implement resolutions emanating from the forum's last meeting held in Yaoundé, Cameroon, for lasting peace, security, economic growth, and development of the region. This present working visit will give us the occasion to think about First, the transborder security context and the perspective of the synergy of cooperation. I'm glad to inform you that the U.S. government has remained committed and resolute in pursuance of the goals that we, the lecture and governors, agreed to achieve in the implementation of the joint action programs and the territorial action plans. Transborder crimes repatriation of Nigerian refugees from Cameroon, reintegration of repentant Boko Haram fighters into the society, as well as stabilization of the region, among others, dominated discussion during a technical session held behind closed doors between officials of the two countries. In the Matu, Yunusa Suleiman, NTA News. Away from security matters, the EFCC, the, that's the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, has arraigned Loki Uchechuku Ndukwe, a manager with the Kubana Group, alongside one precious Ofure before the Special Offences Court sitting in Ikeja, Lagos. The defendants were arraigned on counts bordering on alleged conspiracy and money laundering. Ndukwe, also known as Kubana Prime Minister and Ofure, were arrested following credible intelligence received about their involvement in the fraudulent activities. During their arraignment, Ndukwe pleaded not guilty, 
while Ofuri pleaded guilty to the charges, prompting the presiding judge, Justice Olubumi Fadipe, to sentence Ofure to three years imprisonment with an option of two million naira fine, 100 hours of community service and forfeiture or items recovered from the convict. The court, however, ordered the remand of Ndukwe in the correctional facility pending the outcome of his bail application and adjourned the case to October 28, 2022 for commencement of his trial. And it's time to join Hingino in our Lagos Network Center. Good afternoon to you. Thank you, Hawa. State governors can provide good and sustainable governance when commissioners for budget and economic planning draw up budgetary process that is actionable and implementable for the good of the masses. Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Clem Agba, gave the advice at a two-day conference for state's commissioners for budget and economic planning in Lagos. Musa Toliat reports that commissioners from 36 states of the country attended the conference. Friends. Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Clem Agba, says commissioners for budget and planning must uphold prudence and accountability so that budget planning can be implementable. He, however, stressed that one of the objectives of the conference is to deepen collaboration between the federal government and the states in implementing national development plan and economic recovery initiatives. The synergy from all types of government is required to achieve the logical aspirations of the plan. In this regard, it is essential for the state's plan to be aligned with the National Development Plan 2021 to 2025. Governor Babajide Songwulu advised that, in addition to budget planning, the commissioners must establish an independent monitoring mechanism to assess the performance of the budget in ministries, departments, and agencies of government. All the qualities that have ruled out must not Fairness, firmness, discipline, prudence. You really need to be on top of the class. May I solicit for your maximum support to enable us to succeed in the task of moving our individual states and the Federation to a higher height. It is the 15th edition of the Commissioners for Budget and Economic Planning Conference. It had the theme. Human Capital Development, a panacea for sustainable development. In Lagos, Musa Tolia, NTA News. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya, has inaugurated a 45,000 litre water hydrant and 22 trucks to boost operations of the Army. Samuel Johnson reports that the ceremony was during his visit to Lagos. The arrival of the Chief of Army Staff at the 70 Command Supply and Transport at Papa was to see officers and men whose commitment to duty prompted the Army Chief to ask for the refurbishment of these vehicles from the state of disrepair to wear a new look, while the dilapidated structure supplying water gave way for a modern hydrant. To commission this uh, facility for the use of our personnel, the protection of our facilities and those of other Nigerians to glory of God. For the host, the water hydrant will serve the military formations and the civilian population in the area, while the trucks are to be in the pool for use under the directive of the chief of army staff. This pillar hydrant system is comprised of 45,000 liter overhead tank, 20 horsepower automatic hydrant pump and necessary pillar hydrant components. This platform has the capacity to combat fire within our AO arrows within a distance of up to 200 meters without the use of a fire truck. Officers from Army Formations in Lagos and Ogun States were on the entourage. In Lagos, Samuel Johnson, NTA News. Do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen for updates. Time for a break. The news will be back shortly with Amina in Kaduna.
to Kaduna Network Center. Deputy Governor of Jigao State, Omar Namadi, has stressed the need for massive investment in children's educational pursuit to prepare them for future challenges. He was speaking in Kaduna at a graduation of Bilal Ibn Raba Islamia. Dauda Mohammed reports. Education is the best legacy to bequeath children and fuse together with religious instruction, youth and age, as well as an opportunity to be morally sound. Quranic recitation from women and students who have graduated from Bilad Ibn Rabba International Academy. The academy, which combines both Islamic education, including Quranic memorization and conventional education, has since its inception about eight years ago set the pace in quality education in a sound, conducive environment. But Alhamdulillah, with the help of my teachers, they are said that the management of Bilal Ibn Raba, that's that our fifth section, I have achieved the aim. Well, I feel excited, I feel anticipation because I know that we are just entering a new stage of our life from now on. I'm finally finishing my secondary school education, so I feel so happy. I can't even express it. So education is very, very important, whether Western education or Islamic education or any religious education you think of. It is very, very important to combine the two. President of the school, Abubakar Isa Lapai, Sheikh Ahmed Gumi and other speakers at the ceremony call on parents to take religious instruction very important. We decided to combine the graduation together, the Islamic section and also the conventional section. The essence of this is to demonstrate the ability, the capacity that we have. Variety of presentations and performances featured at the event. Dauda Mohammed, NTA News. 100 parrots have been confiscated from illegal wildlife traders by the Nigeria Customs Service Canoe Command and formally handed over to the Nigerian Conservation Foundation for onward resettlement in the southern part of the country. Mohamed Ali reports that the National Environmental Standards and Regulations Enforcement Agency, Nestria, and Canoe Zoological Garden facilitated the handover. That was the symbolic handing over of the 100 parrots confiscated by operatives of the Nigeria Customs Service from illegal wildlife traders on the 21st of June 2022 along Kano Dora Road in Katsina State. Out of the 100, two died while in the care of the Nigeria Customs Service before authorities of the Kano Zoological Garden took temporary custody of them. The good news is that the birds will be sent to save heavens. These birds are not from the savanna, so they are not from northern Nigeria. They need to be taken closer to where their natural environment is, so they will be taken to the south to this good facility they will be looked after and be watched uh, to make sure that their flight feathers grow back and that they are healthy and uh, flying around and able to survive in the wild with our collaboration with regulation and with no sensitization we can be able to track most of these illegal trade of wildlife animals the Nigerian Conservation Foundation therefore appeals to relevant authorities to counter illegal trading of wildlife in Nigeria as they contribute to the ecosystem. First phase of 73 parrots will be taken to National Park Lagos, while the remaining ones will be moving to Yankari National Park in both states. Muhammad Ali, NTN News. And that's it from here. It's back to Hawa in Abuja. Very well, Amina. Thank you. As Nigeria strives to boost food self-sufficiency and increase foreign exchange earnings, experts in the statistical space stressed that this cannot be achieved without accurate data for food production and utilization. Muplang Dakok reports that this was at a training on food balance sheet and public sector management organized by the National Bureau 
of statistics. Economies around the world use the food demand sheet to determine the overall trend in national food demand and supply and expose any food deficits that may necessitate imports. With this in mind, statisticians and other stakeholders from different parts of the country are meeting in Abuja for five days, and the focus is to expose participants on improved methodologies for Nigeria's food balance sheet. To get Nigerians out of hunger, application of food balance sheet is their main. Food balance sheet is essential for sustainable food security. The food balance sheet provides a sound basis for the policy analysis and decision making in order to ensure food security. It is therefore suggestible that the federal government should establish through an act of parliament a national standing committee or National Food Balance Sheet Forum. As Nigeria faces food insufficiency, experts here advocate that government has to address the issues of insecurity if it is to achieve food security. This, this training will help us to be able to come up with accurate data that can inform government on the availability of food and whether there is need for us to import any particular type of food item, or we have all our food requirements in the right quantity that is needed. Concurrently held is a training on public sector management to equip participants with requisite administrative procedures and knowledge on how best to position themselves for contribution to economic growth. In Abuja, Muplang Dakok, NTN News. And the National Orientation Agency is taking steps to bring to the consciousness of the public the need to evolve proactive measures for the prevention of flooding and its impact in Ekiti State. This came to the fore at the consultative sensitization on the 2022 flood preparedness, mitigation and response organized by the Ekiti State Directorate of the agency. Kola Adebobui reports. This is a rural community in the southwest local government area of the state. Anytime it rains, it used to be a major source of nightmare. It took the traditional council and the entire community to arrest what would have degenerated into a major erosion disaster in the state. Iro was therefore one of the erosion prone areas visited by a team of both the National Orientation Agency, NOEA, and the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, during their ongoing sensitization on the danger of flooding. Officials of the two agencies are crisscrossing the state to enlighten the people on the need for effective and efficient flood preparedness, mitigation and response. So the people to desist from activities that can endanger the lives of people by reason of this uh, flash flooding that's about to occur. The Alawi of Ilawe Kiti, Opa Ajibade Alabi, who described as pathetic the experiences of his community over the years from ravaging flooding, noted that efforts of stakeholders are required to mitigate and respond effectively to flooding. If the people in the community who keep to the roads, do the needful, uh, will be able to prevent all this uh, disaster. The state director of the National Orientation Agency, NOA, Mrs. Olawu Mifamu Iwa, appeared to relevant stakeholders to cooperate with government in taking proactive measures to address avoidable flooding and its associated impacts. In Nadwekiti, Kola Adebogvi, NT News. From Nadwekiti to Abuja, when the Director General National Emergency Management Agency, Mustafa Habib Ahmed, says the agency is committed to evolving innovations and procurement of modern equipment for the effective management of disaster and risk man reduction across the country. The NEMA boss said this when he received the Senate Committee on Special Duties and Oversight, VESET. Ilyasu Yakubu reports. The Senate Committee, who inspected facilities at the agency's headquarters, said NEMA, as an emergency agency, must be given all the necessary support to succeed in the management of disasters across the country. The committee chairman particularly enjoined the agency to upscale its operations in the area of mitigation and risk reduction to reduce high rate of fatalities in the event of disaster. We can see that NEMA, you know, are prepared, you know, for 
uh, for providing the services expected of them. But we all know they are also constrained, you know, by funding. So we wish, you know, more items of this sort, you know, will be, will be procured and then to be distributed, you know, all over the country so that, you know, the emergency situations can be handled immediately. The DG Nema commended the committee for the useful advices rendered to the agency and promised to prioritize SIM in the discharge of its duties. But I welcome this um, oversight visit and looking forward to more of this because with this sitting down and uh, exchanging ideas can take Nema. A step further. The Senate committee members took turn to make observations and recommendations for effective management of disaster. In Abuja, Ilias Yakubu, NTA News. And it's the turn of Gabrielle in Port Harcourt for more reports on Nationwide. It's over to you. To Port Harcourt. The joint military operations, Operation Delta Save, has handed over mopped up weapons to the National Center for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons, Commander Operation Delta Safe Amina Hassan says from 2016 to date, the command has mopped up over 5,000 small arms and small weapons from criminals disturbing the waterways, terrorizing citizens and the nation's assets within its jurisdiction of operations. Yours sincerely has to do to us. Commander Operation Delta Safe, Rear Admiral Aminu Hassan says the over 5,000 arms and light weapons mopped up from 2016 to date were recovered during various operations conducted by troops of Operation Delta Safe within the South South region. I therefore urge all members of the public to support the government in its efforts to, er to eradicate illicit arms in circulation and by extension promote an illicit arms free society. The Joint Task Force South South Operation Delta Save has continued to record tremendous successes in stemming the tide of criminal attacks on communities and individuals in its joint operations area. Receiving the weapons, the Zena coordinator of South South National Center for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons, Major General Effion Martin Abbott, retired, appreciated the troops and implored the general public to always give necessary information to lead to recovery of illegal firearms in the hands of criminals. The center is doing all it can in terms of intelligence gathering, in terms of tracking, also in terms of advocacy to ensure that these weapons don't find their way into the country and that uh, non-state actors don't be a weapon. It will be recalled that the federal government in 2021 established the National Center for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons to stop incessant bloodletting and insecurity occasioned by small arms and light weapons in circulation within the communities by mopping up all illicit weapons in Port Harcourt. Treatment and management of tuberculosis as susceptible in all health is accessible in all health facilities in Cross River States. Program manager tuberculosis, Buruli Ulsa, and leprosy Cross River States. Dr. Jonah Ofo, while encouraging Cross Riverians to take advantage of the free TB services and get screened for treatment, stated this while giving an update on the state of TB treatment and management in Cross River State. Maureen Leo Ajun has a details. Tuberculosis, also known as TB, is an infectious disease that causes infection in the lungs, spine, brain, and the kidneys. According to World Health Organization, in 2020, Nigeria recorded a total of 136,591 cases, 15% higher compared to 120,260 cases recorded in 2019. Similarly, in 2021, the country recorded 207,785 cases, 50% higher compared to the number recorded in 2020. Records from the tuberculosis, Burundi, ulcer, and leprosy program in Cross River State has it that over 2,000 cases of tuberculosis are detected quarterly. Anywhere. We go to for TV services and you are asked to pay money for the drugs. You should let the cross river TV program to you. We are not supposed to be what to pay one dime for the drugs. It's an airborne infection, that means 
We contact TB through coughing, sneezing, singing. When we do all those things, for somebody that has TB, you're most likely going to pass the, back, uh, the infection. However, adherence to tuberculosis medication still pose a challenge. Patients are therefore advised to ensure adherence to medication as TB is curable and treatment is accessible, while Nigerians are being advised to look out for signs and symptoms of tuberculosis. The signs and symptoms include cough that lasts more than three weeks, chest pain, coughing or blood, feeling tired all the time, night sweats, chills, fever, loss of appetite and weight loss. In Calabar, Maureen Leo Ajom, NTN News. And as a contribution from Port Harcourt Network Center, Nationwide continues with our in Abuja after this break. Thanks for rejoining us. It's Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. Migration is acknowledged to be a common practice across the world, particularly when it is done in a lawful manner. But it becomes a burden to society when individuals circumvent the border controls to illegally enter a country. And the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission is working with international partners to encourage Nigerians to stay back and develop their further land. Chairman, Chief Executive Officer of the Commission, Abike Dabiri Erewa, was speaking at the 48th State House Ministerial Press Briefing held in Abuja on achievements by the Commission within the year. The President successfully brought back every Nigerian stranded in Ukraine. And I'm just speaking, we thank him for that leadership. Every Nigerian that was stranded in Ukraine came back home. And after they came back home, NITCOM, in collaboration with Commission for Refugees, had um, some kind of mental counseling session for them. As part of its mandate, the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission also engages Nigerians abroad on how they could meaningfully contribute to development back home using their skills, contacts and finances. The bilateral trade and diplomatic relations between Nigeria and China have remained cordial in the last 51 years with fruitful evidences in job creation, establishment of industries, infrastructural and agricultural development in Nigeria. Guests on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria, speaking on the Nigeria-China relations, are of the opinion that bridging a few imbalances will be of greater benefit to both countries. Thomas Ogbetere reports. Nigeria remains China's largest trading partner in Africa with a trade volume of over $50 billion annually. This provides a huge market for various Chinese products such as electrical machinery and equipment, vehicles, furniture and nuclear reactors, among others. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria say the bilateral relations between China and Nigeria has no doubt led to the creation of jobs and wealth establishments of industries, infrastructural development, medical and health services. When we started economically romancing with China, we came to discover that there is fruitful evidence that Africans as well as the Chinese can actually reckon with. Why is it so? In our more than 100 years of relationship with the West, we come to discover that the benefit we are deriving with the shortest period of relationship with China is actually more noticeable. China has a diversity of cultures, just as Nigeria, being the largest in population in the world, and Nigeria being the largest too in Africa. You see, they, they have some uh, correlation already. The Chinese ambassador to Nigeria who noted that the next five decades of the relationship between the two countries will be more beneficial, says... This is a 5G and 5I equipment to national infrastructure, ICT, industry, investment, and import-export as security structure, speed, synergy, supervision, 5T, talent, and self-exchange. I want to emphasize, if you look at history, 
We are always talking about liberty, democracy, freedom. He is optimistic that Nigeria-China diplomatic relations will blossom more in Abuja. Thomas Ogbetari, NTA News. To politics now, it has been a moment of crisis management for the People's Democratic Party since the party's primaries. But for the national chairman, Senator Yocha Ayu, it is part of the process and all issues will be resolved. This optimism was expressed after a closed or interactive session between the party's National Working Committee and governorship candidates of the party at the PDP National Secretariat in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf reports. The interactive meeting of the PDP National Working Committee and the party's governorship candidates for the 2023 election is part of strategies towards a victorious outing, winning at the national level and hoping to return the PDP to over 25 states as it were in the past in the forthcoming election is the desire of the members in this meeting. The governorship candidates stressed the need for the party to be united and resolve issues among members as fast as possible. Party supremacy is above every other consideration. This is the take-home message from the meeting. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. The National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies is working to ensure that a vibrant legislature occasioned by vibrant legislative aids is built in Nigeria. The Director General of the Institute, Professor Abubakar Suleiman, who said this at the end of a three-day capacity building workshop, reiterates the resolve to equip stakeholders with the best parliamentary practices. John Yaku has that. The past three days, Abdullah Mohammed Nasir has been updating his knowledge on assessing and tracking committee activities, advanced drafting motions and resolutions, legislative transition and the rule of legislative aid, as well as social media freedom of information and the legislature. As we are approaching the 2023 general election, Nigerians should be wary of a lot of fake news, a lot of deceit, a lot of lies that people upload from the comfort of their homes and the social media. Like his other colleagues, he also learned a lot on translating policy into legislation, important provisions of the 2022 Electoral Act. We've been told uh, how to generate uh, reports at the end of uh, our sessions. At least we've had to understand how you can live your life after your legislative experience. The period we are in is an electionary period. We need to be very careful, you know, so that we don't overeat the, the, you know, the polity. That is exactly what the Director General, National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies, Professor Awaka Suleiman, wants the likes of Abdullah Mohammed Nasir to benefit to make that arm effective and efficient. We cannot now violate the democracy without violence in the city. And our other cultures, both at the state level and at the national level, they are grown from different colleagues. More than 300 National Assembly legislative aides participated in Abuja, John Yaku, NTA News. Nigeria, just like many other African countries, currently faces socio-economic challenges dating back several years. Speaking at the Ibrahim Babangida Dialogue held in Abuja, experts in economics and policy development identified the need for the emergence of credible leaders at all levels who will drive sustainable change and innovation on the continent. It will be difficult for us as a nation until we begin to see skills as the educational needs that we have, until we begin to target the new world than the old world that the colonial masters left for us. So we urge that there should be 
real political will on the part of government to make sure that the issues of insecurity are properly addressed. The policy dialogue is in honor of the former military president, General Ibrahim Babengida. Still on developmental matters, the federal government is working towards completing signature projects being undertaken by the present administration before the end of the second quarter of 2023. Minister of Works and Housing, Baba Tunde Fashala, said that these are the 28th meeting of the National Council on Works in Kanu. Abdullahi Mustafa has the details. On several occasions, Baba Tunde Fashola has been in Kano to inspect the various road and housing projects being undertaken by the federal government. This time, he is leading delegates to the 20th meeting of the National Council on Works holding in the state capital. The host state, he noted, is a beneficiary of numerous capital projects that are either initiated or inherited by the Bahari's administration. The minister attributed the success being recorded to the passion and support of the state governor, Abdullah Omar Ganduji. When we ask for land to build housing estate, Kano has responded. When we have issues relating to compensation, Kano has set forward to say, land is a state matter. Kano will solve the compensation matter within Kano state and we will resolve it. This governor has stepped forward. The road between here and Katana, it is ongoing. There's abandoned before, but now it is on. Now they road from Kano to Bayi to Katana. The governor, who also appreciated the federal government's attention to Kano in terms of development projects, briefed the minister about his administration's mega projects that are designed to make Kano a world-class mega city. This, he explained, will in addition ease vehicular movement, especially in the central business district in Kano. Abdullah Mustafa, NTA News. The National Environmental Standards and Regulations Enforcement Agency has launched investigations into complaints about the resurgence of artisanal mining in the Oshun River, raising fears of degradation of the environment, destruction of farmlands and contamination of water. Compliance monitoring reports of the agency in the affected areas indicate a large presence of Chinese miners who, with the aid of excavators and related equipment, mine and wash the minerals along or close to river courses. These activities are said to be making the Oshun River more turbid with reddish coloration. Nestria considers these as worrisome since the cultural practices at the Oshun Grove require contact with the water in the form of drinking, bathing, and people also use the water daily in their homes. At the conclusion of the investigation, the provision of national environmental mining and possession of coal, oils, and industrial mineral regulations 2009 and other environmental instruments will be involved against those involved in unsustainable mining practices in the state. This would definitely mean that perpetrators would have their facilities sealed and they would also be charged to court for environmental violations. Nesria says it is strengthening its enforcement infrastructure by building the capacity of its workforce and reviewing the national environmental regulations to make them more deterrent and also incorporate emerging environmental issues. The 10 years of the China-Africa media cooperation have been mutually beneficial and Africa is poised to ensure its sustainability. This was the message of African Union Chairperson and Co-President of the Forum, President of Senegal, Maki So, to the fifth Forum on China-Africa media cooperation. Haman Jebani completes the report. 
2022 makes the 20 year of China African Media Cooperation and the fifth forum of the cooperation, which has seen the co production of programs and much of visit of media personnel, has seen to the training and capacity development programs for African media practitioners, help African countries train high caliber professionals in news, broadcast, and tourism. Where the digital revolution is accelerating thanks to the new possibility that I take a is such as AI, 5G, particularly South African cooperation in media proved to be even more relevant. We should also strengthen the capacity building of the media system, which has been a constant demand of our side. In particular, we should strengthen education for young people. We wish to call, wish to call for the review, the review of our memorandum of memorandum understanding of with China on China media on exchanges, media exchanges to reflect the to current reflect realities. Mayor of Beijing. National Radio and Television Administration say China will continue to promote more exchange programs between Chinese and African media personnel, promote the integrated development of African media and advance practical media cooperation. Exchanges between the two sides in economy, trade and technology and bilateral people to people and cultural exchanges have been deepened. In particular, media cooperation between China and Africa has been enhanced and produced fruitful results. The team of the fifth forum is new vision, new development, new cooperation. Hamman Jabani, NTA News.